Peace, world. It's Timbo from Info Minds. Now, we got a special episode for you guys today. We're going to try to educate the people a little bit today. So we have someone going to be able to break down a lot of the stuff that's been going on in the past couple weeks in the hip-hop industry, in the entertainment world. Now, Mr. Hill, can you introduce yourself to the people and give us a little background about yourself? My name is Hilton Napoleon. I'm an attorney in Miami, Florida. I've been practicing for 15 years. I specialize in criminal law and civil rights violations, both in federal and state court. Tory Lanez has pled not guilty to felony assault charges in the July shooting of Megan Thee Stallion. Now, if convicted, he faces up to 22 years and eight months in prison. How bad is it looking for Tory Lanez, and is he in serious trouble? I think it's important to point out that Tory Lanez's case is in state court as opposed to federal court. So there are a lot of different options to resolve his case in a way that is favorable. At the end of the day, Megan Thee Stallion is also a celebrity and she doesn't want this thing to linger out. So my guess is that there will probably be some deal made where he might have to spend some time in jail on top of some time in probation, make some form of donation, do community service, write a letter of apology to her and things of that nature. But to be honest with you, I don't just see it being swept under the rug because according to the allegations against him, he shot somebody in the foot. And from my understanding, there were additional witnesses who can potentially be forced to come forward and to testify about what they actually saw. Now, there's a lot of stigma that comes with rappers filing police reports or cooperating or taking the stand. From your knowledge and experience, would Megan have to file a police report in order for the authorities to charge Tory Lanez? She wouldn't have to file a police report because once she went to the hospital and there was a gunshot wound that was taken, the police are automatically going to come and investigate and take a statement from her. From my understanding, her initial statement was not as forthcoming, but later on she did tell the police what happened. When a person commits a crime, not only is it a crime against a particular victim, i.e. Megan Thee Stallion, but it's also a crime against the state, i.e. the state of California, because the state is entrusted to protect the people and citizens of the state of California. So it's not that Megan Thee Stallion has to go and pursue this thing, the state of California can pursue it. And in some situations, even if she does not want to cooperate, they can sometimes force her to cooperate. And that happened in a case down here in Florida not too long ago. There's another rapper who found himself in trouble with the feds recently. His name is G Herbo. He has pleaded not guilty to federal fraud charges. What kind of time could he be looking at if he is found guilty of those federal fraud charges? From my understanding, G Herbo was charged with wire fraud, one count, and then also nine separate counts of aggravated identity theft. I believe that they claim that he was using stolen credit cards to get private jets, access to private yachts, and things of that nature. Aggravated identity theft carries a two-year minimum mandatory penalty on top of anything else that he would receive. So basically, wire fraud is the first charge. And if he gets, let's just say, three years on the wire fraud, and if he were to plead guilty to aggravated identity theft also, he would have to serve an additional two years on top of the three years, so it would be five years total. Now, I'm not saying that that is going to happen, that he's gonna serve five years. I'm just using that as an example. But when I looked at his case, it seemed as though a lot of the incidents that he recently got charged for happened back in 2016 and 2017. So that's part of what I was saying before that the feds have plenty of patience. And the thing about G Herbo's case that some people may not realize is that the Secret Service was investigating his case. So they're going to do a thorough job. This isn't something that, generally speaking, just gets wiped away because they have all the resources in the world and they use them, even in cases like this. So my guess is that they probably have surveillance videos. They probably have computer information to show that whatever card he used was linked to him in some way, some form or fashion. 
Rapper A Boogie with the Hoodie was arrested after a raid at his New Jersey home. He was hit with weapons and marijuana possession charges. How bad does it look for A Boogie? Regarding A Boogie, it kind of really depends on his criminal history. It's going to depend on who the prosecutor is. State court is a lot different. I don't see this being some long drawn out case, but again, you know, a lot of it is going to depend on which particular entity or governmental entity is investigating it. I believe that it was a, a state court case. This is probably on the lower echelon of criminal cases compared to the ones that we talked about today. Now, more recently, Little Wayne has pled guilty to the gun possession charge. With him pleading guilty, in your experience, what type of time is he likely to receive, if any? It's really hard to say right now, but what I can tell you is that two things. He has an excellent attorney, and he probably has one of the more favorable judges in the Southern District of Florida down here where I practice law. So he has a lot of good things going in his favor. It appears that there has been some form of agreement in the sense of they agree to what the charge is and they somewhat agree to what the federal sentencing guidelines should be. Right now, he's facing anywhere from 12 to 15 months in prison. It could be less than that, depending on what the judge wants to do, but it'll probably end up being somewhere around a year.